Greetings, everyone. My name is Sana Harris, and I'm the Employment Specialist here at the Economic Opportunity Board. Welcome to Workforce Wednesdays. This is our bi-weekly initiative. We, we are here on the first and third Wednesday of every month at 11 a.m., and we will bring to you employers, trainers, educators, so that you are aware of the opportunities that you have available to you in the community. Today, we are going to be interviewing Yesenia and Phelan from See Us Now Staffing. Um, if you are joining us live, you can leave your comments in the chat below and we will do our best to answer your questions. Also, if you would like to visit our website, our website is eobcapsnv.org. If you need assistance with resumes, if you need job referrals, if you'd like to go back and view this live, then you are more than welcome to visit our website. If you would like to submit your resume for Scott Bushman to review, you can email your resume to workforce at eobcapsnv.org. If you just simply like to reach out to us, maybe you're not that computer savvy and you prefer a more personal touch, you can reach us at 702-445-7105. All right, so today we do have, as I mentioned, See Us Now staffing, and they are gonna tell us all about their organization and all about the positions they have available. We also have Mr. Scott Bushman here who is gonna to talk to us a little bit about resumes and what's new in um, the job market. Phelan, um, would you please introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Phelan Chisholm and I'm the branch manager for See Us Now Staffing. I kind of oversee all of the recruiters here at the um, corporate offices and uh, make sure that everything is running smoothly. All interviews are done and all job um, requests are filled. Okay. Yes. And Yesenia is one of my recruiters, so she can tell you a lot about what jobs uh, that she has open and, uh, and wh wh where do they need to apply and how to get in touch with us. Great, great. Thank you so much. Uh, Yesenia, please introduce yourself as well and give us a little bit of background about what you do. Okay, great. Thanks, Anna. Uh, my name is Yesenia Murray. I am a... Um, recruiter here at CS Now Staffing, and I work primarily on a lot of the um, administrative office clerical positions. I do a little bit of light IT. I also help with some light industrial as well, and um, just kind of help out wherever I can, but my main skill set is more of the accounting, finance, administrative, clerical. Okay, great, great. So it sounds like you do a little bit of everything. That's right. <laughs> All right, can you tell us about what positions um, that you normally have at CS Now Staffing? Sure, I currently have an opening for an accounting clerk. Um, they are looking for somebody with payroll. So really just a small payroll, about a year to one to three years experience is fine. Um, they're running about 10 people. They basically audit it and get it prepared for the company. If, if somebody has experience use, utilizing paychecks and or ADP, that's perfect. Um, they would like somebody with QuickBooks background, highly preferred QuickBooks online. Mm -hmm. And they will be processing them, accounts payable, accounts receivable, um, also expenses and things of that sort. They will be working in tandem with their bookkeeper. Okay. So again, one to three years of accounting experience is ideal. And then I also, for the same company, I have an office assistant. This person would be responsible for answering phones, some data entry, um, taking calls from their customers, getting mm -hmm. um, orders into the system, and then also helping with some marketing materials. Okay. And then some filing and just some other duties as needed. Okay. And then I have a, another office administrative position. This one's a little bit unique in that it's the afternoon hours. It would be uh, 3 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Okay. It's for a manufacturing operations. And they uh, same type of duties, but a little bit, maybe more of an um, admin that has anywhere between like five to seven years experience, they would be handling some scheduling, they would be taking minutes, getting memos together, um, calendar management, mm -hmm. things of that nature. 
Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I also have a graphic designer that's uh, open and that one she is looking for somebody really heavier on the web design mm -hmm. and some, you know, with uh, some graphic design as well, they will need to have some HTML, CSS and Java background. Okay. okay. And then I have a couple of positions for one of my other clients. It's a plastic fabricator and they fabricate plastics at their office. A lot of like the cubes that you'll see at if you go to a, an art gallery and whatnot. So anything, um, they make the little tchotchkes and stuff that anything that's plastic related, they um, form there at their, at their facility. So somebody that has um, some liquid welding experience is familiar with cuts, good math skills, et cetera, ideal. Okay. Is there any, for that position, um, you have to have those qualifications or is there any training? Um, it, they said who would work great would be somebody that has cabinet making experience. Okay. The ideal they could train them. Um, and then also a handyman. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's okay. good hand tools and, you know, the cuts and stuff like that. They could train. So in a sense, yes, there is training if they don't have the actual uh, plastic fabrication experience. Okay. And then I also have a, it's called, we're calling it a hybrid CNC. So a CNC machine operator with that uh, experience running a CNC machine, they need to be comfortable jumping in and helping on the plastic side as mm -hmm. well so and they'd be willing to train as long as they have the cnc experience mm -hmm. they can train them on the um plastic forming great that is a wide variety of positions that you have available <laughs> i've never even heard of a plastic fabricator so that that was the main reason for me asking about the experience because i, I just didn't see how many people would probably have that experience but that is a wide range of um, positions that you have available. So it sounds like you have something for everyone. I do, yes. And they can all be found via ZipRecruiter. Okay. So, yep, just want to put that out there. Okay. And what part of town are you located in? Our office is on the southeast side. We're at um, off of Eastern and Harmon. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But we do service the Las Vegas and surrounding areas. Okay. And are these positions uh, temporary, seasonal, full-time? Most of them that I just mentioned, those are going to be contract to hire. Okay, great. Contract to hire. All right. Can you tell us um, about how many, how many people do you employ, let's say per month? Well, I've been, been here a short time. Do you maybe failing? You kind of get the reports. Do you know kind of in, on an average? Mm -hmm. uh, around twenty to twenty-five per month mm -hmm. on on going to various clients. Okay, okay. So that's pretty busy. And of of that amount, how many of them are usually um, hired on permanently? Well, they have to reach a certain amount of hours mm -hmm. before before they're considered to hire on permanently. Okay. Um, we would say maybe um, twenty five percent. Okay, okay, those are good numbers. Um, yes. How long has your company been in business? For eight years, eight or nine years, almost nine years. Okay. And are, are you only located in Las Vegas? Do you have um, no? We we have we have another branch in uh, in Texas. Okay. And we have we just opened another branch in uh, Indiana. All right. Okay, so if someone is looking to relocate, um, then to either one of those states, Texas or Indiana, and they're already working for CS Now staffing here. Do they have that opportunity to transfer? I mean, of course, it's not going to be the same job, but would they still have their information and their credentials with the company? Would it just transfer over or? Yes, it would It would transfer over. We'd put them in, in contact with our staff that's in those other various states. So we'd get them uh, all aligned up with them so they can take it from there. Okay, great. Okay, great. And so if I were looking to um, be employed uh, through 
CS Now staffing, um, would I go to your website? Are you open to the public? Yeah, that would be the first place you would start is at our website. Um, it's CS, csnowstaffing.com. And there's two sections on there for an employer. If an employer would like to sign up with us to become a client for the client or an employee is an applicant looking for work, they would go to the uh, applicant's uh, side and, and complete the initial application. Mm -hmm. Once they can complete the initial application, that puts them in our system. And uh, then once they're done with that, if, they're, if they're, they want to continue, they give us a call. We'll set up an interview with them on okay. this, you know, and have them and verify that their interview, have them come in for their interview. And during the interview, we uh, tap into their skill sets and see mm -hmm. what do we have that, you know, would, would uh, match up with their skill sets. Okay. And uh, we go from there and probably place them. Some are placed the same day, sent out on assignments the same day. Wow. Great. That is amazing. Um, have you noticed any difference? Um, Yesenia, have you noticed any difference in, I know you mentioned that you hadn't been with the company very long, but during COVID, did your numbers drop? Was there an increase at, um, in, in need for employees or was there a de decrease in jobs or what did that look like for you? Well, I started after the whole COVID debacle and as we're starting to open up, but however, I'm hearing from my colleagues who were here. Um, yes, there was a, a moment where there was a little bit of a lull and now we're getting, you know, um, we're like the first ones at the front line where they're needing people immediately. So they've reached out. Right. So they did see yeah, a drop and then gradually picking back up. Okay, that's great. That is great because we need to get Nevada back to work, right? That's right. That's mm -hmm. what we're working on. Right. Are there other positions? What uh, can you tell us a little bit about what other positions? I'll, I'll tell you about that. We have a warehouse associate position and oh. uh, I'll tell you what the job description says. Uh, perform, perform various warehouse activities such as receiving, input, sort, load, and unload products. You organize stock, maintain inventory, process, pack, and ship orders, process, pack, and ship orders accurately, um, restock as needed, inspect products for damages, and, and, and complete the report as needed, and you need to maintain a clean and orderly warehouse environment. We have uh, a, lot of, a lot of openings for that position okay. as a warehouse associate. We also have a REACH forklift operator position okay and there to operate uh powered industrial trucks to load and unload materials and deliveries and move them to the to and from storage areas machines and loading docks into railroad cars trucks storage facilities and in narrow aisles and areas so there be, they would be loading and unloading goods from vehicles such as trucks moving the goods packed on pallets or in crates around the warehouse, okay. stacking goods in the correct storage bays and following inventory control instructions. All right, all right. So that is a lot. Mm -hmm. That is uh, very hands-on. Yes. So that person would probably need to be able to lift 50 pounds, be able to be on their feet for extended periods um, and definitely be able to operate equipment. So they would need, um, those qualifications for that position. Is there any training available for those? Yes, they would train them if they're pleased with uh, what they see on the initial okay. uh, in interview. They interview with us and then they interview with the client as well. Okay, okay. So when you interview the clients, what is it that you, you're looking for? What does the ideal candidate um, look like in general? Because I know you have various positions um, that you have available, but just in general, what does the ideal candidate look like? Their um, physical, that we need to see if they're physically able to do the work because it's gonna be a lot of lifting and some heavy work. And uh, we, we need to uh, see, we can't uh, bring in an 89 pound person to go in and do a <laughs> lot of warehouse lifting. <laughs> so we're looking at them physically and right. to, make, to make sure that uh, they meet because meet the client's requirements. The client would normally give us their requirements. So we kind of look 
follow the client's requirements for who, who they, what they're looking for and what type of person they're looking for. Okay. Okay, great. That is amazing. And what most, is it? most of the uh, clients, we'd like for them, sometimes the, most of the applicants, the client will require them to have reliable transportation. Okay. Yes. So transportation is definitely at the top of the list. All right. And what about, um, you know, in this climate that we're in, a, a lot of people may have um, some things on, they may have a record or a background. I know that you all probably do a background check. What is it that will disqualify them um, for that background check? I'll let Yesenia answer that. Okay. Okay, yes. So um, a felony is probably, you know, is going to be more something that our clients just won't work with. We are a second chance employer, though. So, you know, if it is, depending on the misdemeanor or, or if it's the degree of the felony, we'll take a look at it. Um, as CS Now staffing is a second chance employer, and we work with some that are, but others may not be. So we usually try to educate the, the, um, contractor prior and letting them know if they do um, share that with us and nine times out of ten they're pretty honest and they before they do all the paperwork and whatnot so we do explain right. to them that CS now staffing is a second chance employer and we do work with some of them that are but not all aren't and you know they're welcome to go through the process and see how that's handled okay great so there is opportunity for a second chance which is beautiful because we all need a second chance right that's <laughs> right mm -hmm. All right. Um, what is it that you find, Yesenia, most challenging about getting your positions filled? Well, I think um, on the client side, sometimes the pay range, <laughs> or pay rate, uh, sometimes what they're wanting, somebody a little bit more seasoned, but the um, pay range really uh, you know, allow is more for somebody a little bit more of a junior candidate. So I try to educate my customer on what the market is supporting and maybe at times show them resumes of someone within the range they're looking to pay and then somebody with the actual skill set and what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that helps, but if not, and the client needs, you know, has it set at this rate, well, then I'm going to do my best to continue the search. Um, and on the candidate side, um, you know, I like them to have good tenure, um, you know, the experience. If it's somebody new in their career, I like to kind of educate them that, um, you know, just to be on time and all, all the uh, details keep a good resume. Uh, Scott, you may know about that. I'm finding a lot of times the resumes are um, in a little bit of a different order. It's what they did. Um, I guess they're just kind of putting what they did um, first at the very bottom. So I'll have them change that up or the, the dates aren't on there or just be, you know, January. I had one gentleman, he was a little bit more of a mature gentleman and he had no dates on his resume yesterday. I said, I'm gonna need you to go back, sit down and really think about it. And yeah, I shared the resume with the client cause he at least came up with the last two places. And then she asked about the others. And then I also told him, trim it down, keep it to the 10. If that's changed, Scott, you let me know, but, you know, trim it down just a little bit, unless you're in IT or some, um, you know, other or graphic designer, sometimes their resumes can be a little bit longer and that may be a little bit more acceptable. So, mm -hmm. and I'll speak on some of the other challenges that we've had is with the uh, unemployment. Okay. We're having a big, big challenge with that because unemployment and their extensions, people mm -hmm. tend to want to stay with unemployment. Mm -hmm. and not uh, go out and secure uh, permanent employment. Right. Uh, and then I just learned recently that unemployment has made some rule changes in the, in the uh, recipient's favor. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if they're out of work or they've ran out of unemployment, they can go to work and work two days, have their unemployment reinstated and get the extension as well, another extension as well. Oh, wow. So we've had some people that just have, have gone out on assignments, worked two days and never hear from them again. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's been a big challenge there. And, and the client, you know, uh, they just really don't like that. They're, they were expecting this person to stay mm -hmm. for the duration. And the person, they were like asking us, can you reach out to them, find out what happened? They worked uh, 13 hours and I didn't hear from them again. 
So mm -hmm. that puts us in a predicament to try to reach the um, applicant again and find out what happened. And sometimes we're unable to reach them because uh, they didn't go back to their assignment. So they're not answering their phones. Right, right, right. Yes. That's unfortunate. Um, so it sounds like you have tons of positions that need to be filled. Um, you are offering temp to perm um, a lot of your positions and you have a wide variety, which means there is a variety in the pay range as well. Um, Yesenia, you said that you have positions for some that are more jun junior level and also positions for some that are more um, seasoned in, in their, in their um, specific work area. Correct. Okay. Okay. So again, if you are joining us live on this Workforce Wednesday webinar, we are here with uh, Yesenia and Phelan from See Us Now Staffing. They have positions for warehouse workers, for forklift operators, for accountants, for uh, payroll. They also have administrative assistant positions. Um, and it looks like some handyman and some uh, welding positions as well. So they have a wide variety of positions and they are most definitely looking for employees. If you need assistance with your resume, you may give us a call. You may go to our website. We have our um, specialist here, Mr. Scott Bushman, who can help you with that resume. He can help you to create one from scratch, or he can help you to update one that you already have. You can reach EOB at 702-445-7105. And if you'd like to go to our website, that website is EOBCAPSNV. Dot org, and we are coming to you live today interviewing with See Us Now staffing. So we let's go to Scott and see if Scott can give us some more um, updates and information on what is new in workforce in regards to resumes and interviews. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the interview or about the, the resumes. And one of the things that is not really new, new, but since about 2000, they quit putting objectives on your resume mm -hmm. and they also quit putting on the terminology uh, reference available upon request. None of those are, are necessary on today's resume. So if you still have it on yours, it pretty means, oh, okay, this person hasn't gone out and gotten a job in the last <laughs> 20 years. I uh, did not yeah. know that. That is excellent information. Mm -hmm. so it, so now what they're putting down is a professional summary at the top that basically says, this is me and this is what I can give to your company. That, that's basically what they're doing instead of an objective. Mm -hmm. uh, they generally put skills at the top that apply to this specific job that they're going for. And then if you're a seasoned employee, then you may want to do what they call a, a functional com combination resume where you put at the top of it, what your skills are mm -hmm. and and the the objectives that you've done at your job that will apply to this job that you're trying to get mm -hmm. and then down at the bottom you just kind of put in the additional uh information about the um jobs that you've had and when you had those jobs so traditionally like you said you pointed out earlier you just want to put it in the last 10 years. So if you've been around for a while, like some of us have been, uh, you want to make sure that you just keep it down to the last 10 years, unless the job you're applying for is something that you've got a skill that you acquired 15 years ago. And then you may want to put that in there. In addition, just show, yeah, I still had that. That's where I got that skill. Uh, as far as the interviews, um, a lot of places are not doing in-house interviews until they get down to the last uh, three candidates. So most of the time what happens is it goes through an applicant tracking system mm -hmm. and that looks at the resumes and it looks for a couple of things. It looks for errors in the resume. Mm -hmm. So if you can't type your toast, have your friend look at it. And, you know, Your friend who's the speller, have him look at it, check it out. 
uh, look at it on, if you're doing it in Word and it shows up with little squiggly red lines underneath it, you might want to check the spelling. Uh, so spelling is a, is a and, and here's the problem. For every job that's being posted right now, there are roughly 1,000 applicants. Wow. And so the, what they're actually trying to do is eliminate Mm -hmm. So the application tracking system goes through and it says, okay, if, for instance, in, in the case like Yesenia pointed out earlier, if you've got something that says uh, must have QuickBooks experience, mm -hmm. somewhere on there, you better have QuickBooks or you're probably not going to get this job. Now, right. don't lie. <laughs> it's, it's not worth it. I have I have an acquaintance who had a girlfriend who taught him how to say some words, some phrases in um, Mandarin Chinese. So he put down <laughs> that he was fluent in Mandarin Chinese. That's so tough. In, in, the, yeah. in the interview, they had him say some stuff in Mandarin Chinese. And of course, none of them knew. It. Absolutely none of them. The next Monday morning, he's on an airplane going to China to try to bring people to Las Vegas. Oh, oh my. And oh. it's not something you can go to the Rosetta Stone and learn overnight, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not picking it up that fast. So or, or, or Babel. Or yeah. Google Translate. Yeah. <laughs> One of those. Yeah, yeah, right. You're sitting there with your phone going, uh, da -da. Uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> hold, it, hold your phone up there and see it and then look at it and see what it translates to. Yeah, you're, you, this is not going to go well. So don't lie. It's not worth it. You don't want that job if you have to lie to get it anyway. You won't feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. or, and it's going to come back and bite you anyway. So don't lie. Uh, right. But you can go in. And, so the other thing to remember is your resume is a uh, portable document. And it's not written in stone. It's, mm -hmm. it's Most of the time, it's a Word document. And you can go in and change things. So I have multiple resumes. One of mine says teacher. One of them says trainer. One of them says educator. One of them says uh, life coach. Because it all requires the same skill set for, for me, but I have to make my resume match what they're asking for. Right. And so that's another key thing. So like you we were saying earlier, uh, if it says QuickBooks is a necessity, you better brush up on your QuickBooks. <laughs> so it sounds like those key words and those key phrases are very important. Um, I did hear you mention, um, Scott, that I, and I've also heard that they have, um, it's kind of computerized that they put these uh, resumes through the, and the computer scans and looks for certain words, certain key phrases. And if you don't have them there, then it just filters you out. And you may be the perfect person for that for that position, right. um, but because your resume was not um, kind of up to par or, or what it needed to be for that position, then you weren't considered. So it's very important that you have an up-to-date resume. It's very important that you know that, like you mentioned, things have changed. Formatting has changed. Requirements have changed just in terms of how you present the resume. So. It's definitely worth it to have someone look at your resume, especially if you haven't used it in a while, or if you haven't been out in the job market in a while. Um, maybe you were on your job 10, 15, 20 years and then COVID hit. And now you're having to go into a new career or you're having to go into um, just a job, any job, just to keep you know your bills afloat. And so you're gonna need to know these things. So it's, it's worth it to take out that little bit of extra time. Give us a call. We're here to help you. We're here to help you get back into the community and get back in the workforce. Scott is definitely qualified to help you get that resume out there to make it look polished and to get you that position that you're looking for. Because par parsing is usually in on every... Um resume program There's right par parsing is going on Absolutely. so yeah you need to have that so it'll pass the parsing test right right and as you mentioned scott that you have you should have several resumes not just one resume that you submit for every job 
you should have a separate resume for each position. Um, it's not that you have to recreate it from scratch, is that right? But you just need to go in and manipulate it a little bit so that you catch those keywords and key phrases. Well, and, and besides which, guys, most of us have, if, if, you, if you're seasoned, if you've, been, if you've had more than five jobs in your lifetime, mm -hmm. you've probably learned different things at each job that would then qualify you for a different thing mm -hmm. at a different job. You just have to put that so that that gets emphasized. I've worked for the forklift, guys. I could go do this forklift job. Uh, Come on, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> they need you, right? We need you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you go through and look at my current resume, forklift's not on it anywhere. Yeah. You know, so just rem remember that depending on what job you're applying for, you want to emphasize the skills that will get you that job. Don't tell them about your forklift experience if you're not going to get a forklift job. Does that, does that, I, I just want to make it so that you understand. And then there was emphasize the skills for this job. And that's why each and every resume needs to be crafted for the job that you're applying for even if it's nothing more than just changing a couple of words here and there to match. You don't want to quote the job posting, but you want to make sure that the keywords are there. Right, right. Scott, let me ask you this about uh, cover letters. Um, that has always been something that I've kind of struggled with personally. Um, and I think some of our viewers may have that same question as well. Where, where are we at with cover letters? Are they important or can you kind of skip it? Are they looking for it? Is it a requirement? That depends. It, <laughs> really, it, it, if they ask for a cover letter, mm -hmm. you can use it to explain certain things in your resume, get them. A cover letter needs to be something that makes them want to read your resume. Okay. So that, that's basically what it's about. Um, for cover, As far as cover letters, I tell people the key thing you want to do is find out who it's going to. Mm. If, you're, if you're creating a to whom it may concern cover letter, you might as well not do it. Okay. So, <laughs> so I, it's I, to be specific. Yeah. So I, what I do is I, I'll, I'll call up at the call to the office and try to catch the receptionist during a not busy time. So not at eight o'clock on Monday morning and <laughs> not at four o'clock on Friday afternoon, try to catch them during a calmer, quieter time. And they just say, hey, who would the person be that I would direct my cover letter to so that I can make it a little bit more personal. Okay. And then that way it, it helps. Or if I know somebody who works at the company ask if it's okay if I use their name as a reference in my cover letter. I was talking to John the other day and he pointed out that Yesenia is the person that I need to send this to. So Yesenia, I'd be, John and I got talking and here's some things I found out about your company. I'm really excited. And here's some things I can bring to the company that will help. And, and so that would be where it's a personal, I'm, I'm talking to you as a friend, uh, trying to get you to read my resume and so we can come in and talk as an interview. Remember right. that the whole purpose for the resumes and the cover letters is to get an interview. It's not your life history. Right. That's right. And I'm glad you, go ahead, Scott. Yeah, it, it, a lot of people don't know that. They think they can't leave anything out. And the answer is no, no, no. You can leave a whole bunch of stuff out. Uh, yes, I've been seen and I'll educate them. Please don't put your date of birth on there or your marital status or, you know, <laughs> anything like yeah. that, because, you know, you don't want to leave that open for any type of discrimination is part one. You know, they don't need to know about your hobbies that you like running, fishing, all that. That's really neither here nor there with the job. They really want to know, can you do the job? That's really what they're focused on. Less is more. Um, yeah. Nine times well, out of 10. Mm -hmm. And the other key thing to remember is, is that by the time this gets to a person, it's already been through the applicant tracking. It's already, and so it gets to somebody who has maybe a hundred resumes to go through. Mm -hmm. They haven't got time to go through and read every single detail. So yours needs to be so that there's something eye-catching right there in the top part. Just to, so if you walk in and, and you're, you're, you pick up a newspaper, you usually scan it and look at the headlines. And then you look at maybe the first paragraph 
If it doesn't interest you, you skip and go on to the next article. Mm -hmm. But if there's something right. in that first paragraph that interests you, you're willing to go through all the rest of that to find the rest of the information. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do on your resume. Somewhere in that top part needs to be something that grabs them so much they're willing to go through the rest of your resume. And then you still want to keep it fairly short. It doesn't have to be exactly one page. It can be a page in four paragraphs. If there's that much detailed information that really needs to be there. But think about it. Is this important or am I just putting it there because I like it? Mm -hmm. right. or just filler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Don't put it in there just to make it look <laughs> like you don't need that. Yeah. And I like what you said about just being honest, because that's why we're backfilling the accountant, uh, the assistant position, the person, they may have had some exposure to QuickBooks, but not enough to be that the person running it. So yeah. it's kind of like the proof is in the pudding. And, uh, but anyhow, so I also, that. Sona, I would like to say besides the uh, job um, orders that we've told you about our job openings that we've told you about, we have many, many more. Okay. Uh, we we have assembly line work on some and um and ju we just have an apex and we have some with with just uh kind of like general labor mm -hmm. uh we have a uh, working for a um it's a commercial laundry a linen company okay okay yeah and um they uh they operate the equipment necessary to sort weigh wash dry iron fold and package laundry this is for most of the hotels here in las vegas they they handle okay. most of their laundry their sheets and towels and napkins and so forth and um so they must be able to stand and and it's a pretty fast-paced thing it's you operate the equipment you're not necessarily uh sorting or weighing or washing it, it it's you're operating the equipment that does that Right, right. So you're kind of like feeding the towels into a machine. The it take the machine takes it and 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 dries it, folds it, and spits it out, folded up. You know, ready, packed, ready to go. Right, right. So we have plenty of those positions. We actually need sixty. We have sixty openings for that. Oh wow! Wow. Yes. Okay. So again, if you are with us live, if you're listening to this live webinar, watching this live webinar, my name is Sana Harris and I'm the employment specialist here at EOB, the Economic Opportunity Board. We are here today with See Us Now staffing. We have Phelan and we also have Yesenia. They have a wide range, a wide variety of positions available, open and ready and waiting for you. You can simply give them a call. You can go onto their website, fill out an application. You have options. This is a second chance employer. So don't count yourself out because you may have um, something on your background or you may have left a job previously or you haven't been in the work field for a while or even if this is your first time, it sounds like they have something available for you from customer service to warehouse to construction to accounting and many, many more, linen, many, many, many positions they have available and they are a second chance employer. The salary ranges do rate, the salary range does vary, um, but that's something that you can discuss with them. Like Yesenia said, you go in, you let them know what skills you have and what you're looking for, and they work with you to find that best fit for you. If you need assistance with your resume, Yesenia has mentioned that she has helped candidates with their resume, give EOB a call. We are here to help you. If you get a job and you need a uniform, you need work boots, you need a health card, you need a sheriff's card, EOB is the place for you. Give us a call, 702-445-7105, or you can visit our website at eobcapsnv.org. We are here to help you get back out into the workforce and back out into the community. Um, Yusinia, is there anything else that you would like to add or that you want our viewers to know? 
Well, um, Sona, I just, um, you know, am happy to be a part of this and glad that you mentioned, yes, we have opportunities for just about everybody at their stage of a work experience, whether it's somebody just getting into the workforce. Now, I do just want to say that um, it's 18 and up is that we can help at this time. Okay. And um, yes, if they're just getting into the workforce, we can assist them. A lot of times the clients are open to office, or excuse me, some entry-level positions. Okay. And they're willing to train, as Phelan had mentioned. Um, and then also, if somebody wants to transition uh, from one, um, I guess, work field to another one, we can also assist them with that. So, mm -hmm. yes, and I also tell people um, that are a little frustrated that they're not getting the interviews, just how Scott had said, sometimes the resume doesn't have the keywords on it and they're going through a system. A lot of times they're just a piece of paper in somebody's inbox until they can get to it. Right. And so uh, with us, it really helps because we can be another avenue in their search. We can be that voice for them, an advocate to um, highlight their skills, their abilities, and the fact that we do meet with them uh, and encourage our clients to meet with the candidates. Great. So I definitely stress that we're another avenue to help them in their search. They can continue um, looking while we're searching as well, mm -hmm. but um, it's great to have somebody speak for, be a voice for you, not just a, right. a piece of paper in somebody's inbox. Right. Especially when you haven't been out there in a while, because it can be scary when yes. you, when you've been on your job 10, 15, 20 years or plus, and now you find yourself back out there in front of someone, you don't know what to say. This may be a new career for you. You may be feeling a little um, less confident. Um, so it can be very scary. So supports are very important to have those yes. supports in place. And as you mentioned, someone to advocate for you is very, very important. So don't hesitate, take that step. EOB is a community action partner. We are here to help you. You have other community, um, other community resources such as CS Now Staffing. EOB has a job bank where we can help you to find employment, um, something that fits you as well. So even if you're looking to get into a new career and you want to do some training, some education and training, give us a call. We can help you with that. Maybe you were a bartender and now you're looking to be a truck driver. Give us a call. We are here to help the community and to get you back out there in the workforce. Phelan, is there anything that you would like our viewers to know? Uh, yes, Sona, I would like to ask you, if we run across some applicants, they come into our office and we realize that they need uh, your help and they need Scott's help, uh, we, can we recommend them to you? Please do. Okay. Please do. Please do. And I'd like to thank Scott. Uh, he gave some pretty good uh, pointers there on resumes, uh, especially not no objectives and using the, your professional summary. Those are some of the things I didn't know because I've been around a while. So <laughs> <laughs> those were very good. And, and to kind of do your skill summary to the opportunity that you're applying for mm -hmm. and to kind of narrow it down to your last 10 years if, if, uh, to be more specific. So that, those are some good pointers. Thank you, Scott. Hey, that's, that's what I'm here for. I want to help people. That's my objective is because guess what guys, I have applied to over 100 positions in this town. Wow. In the last 40 years, 30, wow. the last 35 years, mm. over 100 positions. So I've had some experience with creating resumes that work. Okay. <laughs> so Personally that, and professional. That means you're an expert. Experience. <laughs> that means you're an expert, Scott. It makes, it makes me an expert. It's not something yes. I'm proud of. It's something that I've learned the hard way. And so therefore I can help some other people. So I don't have to go through what I do. Good. Experience good. is the best teacher. That's what they say, right? That's yes. right. And Sona, I'd also like to add, if I could, uh, to uh, for our viewers just to be as flexible as possible with regard to pay range of job duties, etc. I'm such a firm believer. If you're faithful in the little things, you'll get promoted to the bigger ones. I can't tell you how many times I've seen success stories. People will come in and they are on time. They uh, catch on. Always take initiative. Ask you know, what else can I do? There's always something to do. And, um, you know, the employers look at that and they're like, you know, that person's sharp and they're really good at this. You know, we have so-and-so leaving this position. Can we talk to them about this opportunity? And that's how they can grow in their career too. So just be flexible. 
you never know who's watching. So it's it's best to always be, you know, doing your best to always be upfront, to always be um, on time, you mm -hmm. know, just to always be that team player because you never know who's watching and you will be one of the first to be recommended when it's time to get that that promotion exactly. or, that, or that new position. So that is excellent advice. Um, also, what I want to mention is um, thank you so much, you know, for your time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the work that you're doing for the community. And please, if you have any candidates that you send out on a job and they need a sheriff's card, a health card, a TAM card, um, they need uniforms, work boots, any of those things, please do give us a call, send me an email. I'll make sure that you have my information and we will do our part to help get um, you know the community back out there and in that workforce. And also, Sona, I would like to let um, the uh, listening audience know that we conduct frequent job fairs here at the corporate offices at, at 4530 Southeastern Avenue, suite number nine here right. in Las Vegas. And we actually have a job fair currently going on right now oh okay yeah, so they'll see the sign we have signs posted out on on eastern avenue and on various uh places where um applicants can see them or anyone interested can see them so all they need to do is uh follow the address and come to the site and 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 we're, we'll take care of them they they can get their uh we can we have computers in our office that allow them to get online and do their initial application mm -hmm. and after their initial application we will conduct an on-the-spot interview mm. and after the interview if there if we found some place that we can place them at we'll we'll go ahead and do the complete onboarding with the drug testing and all right here in the office now you that know? is convenient <laughs> that yeah, they, is convenient yeah they don't have to go any place. We do our drug testing right here in the office oh, and right. uh, we, we process them all the way through. And once they leave here, most times when they leave, they have, they've already, they have a, an assignment to go on. And then we follow that up with the text, sending them where the assignment is, what, you know, what time to be there, mm -hmm. who, who is their contact person once they get there. And we ask for a confirmation that they did receive this text and uh, they understand it and know what to do. All right, so it sounds like you all are eliminating barriers. Yes. You we come into like the job fair, you meet the employer, you do your application, you do your drug test, and you get your assignment. I like it. Absolutely, I yes. love it. No, <laughs> no hassle for someone that may be on the bus or someone um, that's in a car, they're not burning their gas driving all around town. You all seem like a one-stop shop. That's it. Yes, <laughs> we are. <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for all that you are doing. We really, really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to working with you and, and having a, a good relationship working together. And again, I'm here. If you need anything, give me a call, shoot me an email. Thank you all for listening. And until next, uh, until next time. All right, Sona. Thank you. And thank You're you for welcome. having us. You're very welcome. Yes. Y'all have a great day. You too. You all too. Goodbye. Bye-bye.